Welcome to QT Learning Channel. In this lecture, we will discuss the dissimilar metal weld cracking. Description of damage. There are four situations that can result in the cracking of dissimilar metal welds. In one, operation at elevated temperature, about 500 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, results in high differential thermal expansion stresses at the weld that lead to creep cracking or creep fatigue cracking. In the second, operation in a wet hydrogen sulfide or similarly severe hydrogen charging environment leads to cracking in the hard dissimilar metal mixed zone in the weld created when the two metals are melted together the third with some similarities to the second occurs on the carbon steel side in welds between carbon steel and alloy 400 in hydrofluoric acid service due to hydrogen embrittlement and or fluoride wedging in the fourth situation dissimilar metal weld joints in and weld overlay on equipment in high temperature hydrogen service can suffer disbonding between the two metals this is commonly referred to as hydrogen disbonding. All four cases typically involve carbon steel or low alloy steel welded to an austenitic 300 series stainless steel or a nickel based alloy. Examples of dissimilar metal weld cracking as illustrated in figures. Affected materials. The most common are ferritic materials such as carbon steel and low alloy steels welded to austenitic stainless steels. In hydrofluoric acid service, it involves carbon steel welded to alloy 400. Cracking due to high differential thermal expansion stress can occur in any material combination having widely differing thermal expansion coefficients. Critical factors Thermal expansion related cracking Important factors include the type of filler metal used to join the materials, heating and cooling rate, metal temperature, time at temperature, weld geometry, and frequency of thermal cycling. Cracking can occur because the coefficients of thermal expansion of ferritic materials and austenitic materials, such as 300 series SS and nickel-based alloys, differ by about 25% to 30% at high operating temperatures. The differences in thermal expansion lead to high shear stresses concentrated at the fusion line. Primarily in the ferritic side has. The higher the operating temperature. The greater the stress created by the differential thermal expansion between the metals. Ferritic austenitic joints can generate significant thermal expansion thermal fatigue stresses at temperatures greater than 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Cracking is most common at service temperatures greater than 800 degrees Fahrenheit.
Thermal cycling aggravates the problem. Stresses during startup and shutdown can be significant. As illustrated in figure dissimilar metal weld cracking due to stresses acting on the weldment are significantly higher when an austenitic stainless steel filler metal is used. And we can avoid the similar metal weld cracking by using nickel based filler metal because of a nickel based filler metal has a coefficient of thermal expansion that is closer to carbon steel resulting in significantly lower stress at elevated temperatures affected units or equipment dissimilar metal welds are utilized in special applications in refineries and other process plants all superheaters and reheaters that have welds between ferritic materials and austenitic materials appearance or morphology of damage in most cases the cracks form at the toe of the weld in the heat affected zone of the ferritic material as illustrated in figures Carbon steel to alloy 400 weld damage in hydrofluoric acid will be characterized by localized corrosion of the carbon steel heat affected zone area and hydrogen stress cracking along the fusion line or coarse grained portion of the heat affected zone as illustrated in photomicrograph image. Prevention, Mitigation For high temperature applications Nickel base filler metals which have A coefficient of thermal expansion closer to carbon steel and low alloy steels Resulting in significantly lower stress at elevated temperatures If 300 series welding electrodes are used the dissimilar metal weld should be placed in a low temperature region. Avoid using dissimilar metal welds for socket welds or pressure retaining fillet welds at temperatures above 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Avoid using dissimilar metal welds in wet hydrogen sulfide and hydrofluoric acid acid service for high temperature service consider buttering the ferritic side of the joint with the stainless steel or nick elvest filler metal as illustrated in figure and perform pwht prior to completing the dissimilar metal weld PWHT will reduce residual stress at the ferritic austenitic interface and thereby reduce the likelihood of high temperature dissimilar metal weld cracking as illustrated in figure Schematic of typical weld detail used to Join a solid stainless steel pipe to a clad or weld overlaid pipe The buttering sequence is Butter the weld bevel on the ferritic steel side 
perform PWHT of the ferritic side prior to making dissimilar weld. Complete the dissimilar weld using alloy filler metal. Do not PWHT the completed dissimilar weld. Inspection and monitoring. The following techniques, alone or in combination, should be considered for non-destructive examination of dissimilar welds during fabrication. Liquid penetrant testing on prep, root pass, hot pass, cap pass, final inspection, and butter layer after post-weld heat treatment, if applicable. Angle beam ultrasonic testing, shear wave ultrasonic testing or phased array ultrasonic testing on butt welds. Ultrasonic testing on butter layer after post weld heat treatment, if applicable, to check bonding. Radiographic testing. Wet fluorescent magnetic particle testing, magnetic materials only, and or Positive materials identification can be used to confirm the chemical compositions of the different materials involved. For inspection for creep damage due to dissimilar metal welds. There is no reliable non-destructive examination method to detect creep in its early stages. Advanced stages can be detected using Angle beam ultrasonic testing, shear wave ultrasonic testing or phased array ultrasonic testing, or field metallographic replication. Destructive testing, removing a sample, to permit metallographic examination or Stress rupture testing may be applicable. For inspection for environmental cracking due to dissimilar metal weld crackings initiating on or near the inside diameter surface exposed to the corrosive environment, liquid penetrant testing or wet fluorescent magnetic particle testing for magnetic materials on the internal surface or a angle beam ultrasonic testing, shear wave ultrasonic testing or phased array ultrasonic testing from the external surface can be used. Related mechanisms to dissimilar metal weld cracking are thermal fatigue, corrosion fatigue, creep and stress rupture, wet H2S damage and hydrogen stress cracking in hydrofluoric acid Summary Description Dissimilar metal weld cracking occurs on ferritic side of weld at high temperature between austenitic and ferritic and any material combinations that have widely differing thermal expansion coefficients. Crack form at toe of welding in has temperature range, elevated high temperature, affected metallurgy, ferritic materials welded to austenitic stainless steels and any material combinations that have Widely differing thermal expansion coefficients. Prevention. For high temperature applications, using nickel base filler metals. Butter the weld bevel on the ferritic steel side. Perform PWHT of the ferritic side prior to making dissimilar weld.
complete the dissimilar weld using alloy filler metal and do not PWHT the completed dissimilar weld. Inspection methods PT, UTRT, PMI and WFMT Practice time. Question number one. Which combination materials prone for dissimilar metal weld cracking? Answer is A. Question number two. Likelihood of dissimilar metal weld cracks location. Answer is B. This lecture is prepared by Samir Saad and this is his profile. Thanks a lot for watching and please waiting us for the next lecture.